Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today I got a screwy video for you. No other way to put it. Let's get into it. Alright guys, in this video, I'm sorry about the pun, uh, it's a screwy video because we're going to be talking about woodworking screws. And the very first thing I want to talk about is should you be using screws in woodworking? Um, there is a debate about that. There are going to be people that are going to say fine woodworking should have nothing but properly cut joinery glued together with no metal fasteners in there. And I agree with that uh, statement for certain types of woodworking and furniture that you build. I also agree that screws are used even in that type of a woodworking shop because you might be building jigs and fixtures to make that fine woodworking and you're going to build those out of cheap scrap wood, plywood, sheet goods and you're going to use screws to hold those things together. So even the fine woodworker probably needs some screws in their shop. Um, other types of uh, construction uh, of furniture, pocket screws, obviously pocket screws, obviously is screws. So there are many reasons to have some screws around the shop. So let's talk a little bit about the types of screws, the sizes that you might need, um, the different heads, the different drive types, and where you should go and what you should get. Uh, first, the types of screws. There are several different types of screws and they're a little bit misnamed and clumped together in the big box store. You know, when you go in there, there's this big wall of <laughs> screws and nails going like one whole aisle, and it's daunting and it can be confusing. And a good 15 foot of that is all what we call sheetrock or drywall screws. And they are a type of woodworking screw, but they're not the type we really want to use that much. I do keep some in here. I have some right here. I don't recommend them for much, but you can use them building small jigs. Uh, you can use them around the shop to do small little types of things. The problem with a drywall screw is twofold. They are <clears throat> brittle. They are made of non-hardened metal. Uh, so they're, they're obviously made cheaply uh, to go through sheetrock, which is very, you know, it's paper. You know, it's, sh it's, it's very uh, soft material. And then into a 2x4, which is the stud wall another softwood. So they don't need to be hardened steel for that purpose. And they work fine for that purpose. The other issue is they have a bugle head. Uh, the bugle head being curved like that to the head. Um, I prefer an angled head that has a perfect angle so that you can make a countersink and sink the head in. I'm going to talk a little bit about the heads in a minute. Just know that uh, a sheetrock or drywall screw is brittle and it doesn't have the proper head for what we want to do. So they're not used that much. And if you snap a sheetrock screw off once in the wrong place in a, a piece of hard maple, you will know why you don't want to use these. The benefit, they're inexpensive. They're probably two to four times cheaper than a good woodworking screw. Um, so the cost is the real benefit there. The other types of screws uh, in the stores, you're going to see them called multi-purpose wood screws. This box here calls them construction screws for MDF and hardwood. Uh, this is the Spax brand. There's a brand called GRK that I want to say the orange store sells these, the blue store sells GRK. They might be in between, between the two, but you know what I mean when I'm talking about that. Spax and GRK are very good brands to get of screws. We'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Uh, online, a company called McFeely's sells all kinds of screws. Um, another good place to purchase screws. <clears throat> but the general purpose, multi-purpose, construction, all kind of fall into the woodworking screw. There's also deck screws. Uh, generally, these are general purpose screws that are a little bit longer and maybe a little bit thicker. Um, and they can be made out of exterior type of materials. Materials that are coated for outdoor use up to and even stainless steel. Uh, a stainless steel screw is also in the deck screw category. Um, they're not as strong as hardened steel screws, but they're very good for outdoors and they're very expensive. Um, those are the different types you're going to see on the boxes in the store. The other things you're going to see on the boxes is things like number eight inch and three quarters. And what the hell does that mean? Well, here we're talking about the size of the screw, the length and the thickness, the gauge. Here in America, we use gauges. And there are a lot of gauges of screws. And I'm just talking woodworking here. So you notice I didn't say anything about uh, 
threads per inch. It's just in woodworking screws, it's the thickness, the gauge, the number eight, and the length, the inch and three quarters. You didn't hear anything about 20 or 32. Uh, a sheet metal screw might be uh, quarter 20, where it's, uh, you know, that 20 is the thread pattern. Woodworking screws don't mention that. You might see fine and thick um, or coarse. Uh, fine for hardwoods, coarse for plywoods and softwoods. Um, for the most part, they don't label it on the box, so you're kind of on your own to look at the threads. But no, and, and if they are a fine coarse, they'll usually say fine or coarse if they're different than the norm. What does number eight and inch and three quarter really mean? Well, the gauges vary here in the United States, and, and overseas they use the metric system, and they're in millimeters, so that's a whole other numbering system you might have to know about. I'm going to put a chart at the bottom of this that covers all of the gauges, lengths, a millimeter conversion, so that I don't have to sit here and explain all of that to you. You can just reference the chart, print it off, hang it on your wall. I'm going to print one and put it right here when I get all my screws converted to this case. Uh, and that will help you with that because you just really can't memorize all of that crazy stuff and it's easier to just reference a chart. <clears throat> for woodworking, we use really two gauges for the most part, the number six and the number eight. Number fours are also used uh, and number tens are occasionally used. The smaller the number, the thinner the screw. The bigger the number, the thicker the screw. No, they go well past 10, 12, 14. They get bigger. But that's really getting into lag bolts and construction type stuff. Much bigger, thicker stuff. Uh, for woodworking, number six and number eight is almost always used. Those are the screws used um, to generally hold two boards together. Uh, the number fours are really small screws, you know, three-eighths of an inch up to about an inch and a half. Uh, actually, inch and a quarter for three-eighths for number four. That's as long as they make them. They're really for holding... Uh, small hinges, fasteners, things like that. And they generally come in the package with the fasteners. So you don't really need to know much about those little guys because you're getting them with what you're buying to use them for. <clears throat> and the number 10, really, if you're building an outdoor project uh, that you need big, thicker screws, you know, an outdoor bench that two or three people might sit on, you know, they're probably going to be deck screws in the number 10 size and you're going to be buying them. The box is going to say deck screws, uh, number 10, two and a half inches. It's just what you're getting, okay? It's just that type of screw. Uh, and that, a perfect example of that would be this screw right here. <clears throat> now, uh, that's the thickness or the gauge. The gauge, 4, 6, 8, and 10 are the ones we're going to be dealing with. The length really is pretty much the length measured. The one caveat to that is the two head types that I'm going to talk about. And let me explain the two heads, and then I'll talk about length a little bit more. We have what we call the flat head, and most of these screws here are flat head. They go up on an angle on each side, and they come across perfectly flat. Um, the other type would be a pan head. But a pan head has a rounded top, and it could have a washer at the bottom. A pan head is made to stay out of the wood. You don't sink it into the wood. These flat heads sink into the wood either by <clears throat> being forced in or properly if you drill a proper counter bore pilot hole and a counter sink hole for the head to go into. So when you measure a screw, a flat head screw is measured from the flat head to the tip because all of the screw is going into the wood. A um, pan head is measured from the bottom of the pan head to the tip because the pan head part, that last eighth of an inch, doesn't go in the wood. So a pan head screw could be a sixteenth or an eighth, eighth of an inch longer than its counter same length flat head screw because the flat head's going into the wood, the pan head is not. Pan heads don't go in because they're used to hold like maybe plastics or metals, other materials to wood. So they don't sink into the wood. That's basically the two types of heads we use. There are trim heads. There are obviously pocket screw heads. There are washer heads. There are other types of heads that you can use. I'm not going to get too much into those because we're talking strictly woodworking screws here. So while we're talking about those heads, the flat head and the pan head, 
they have multiple different drive types on the end of them. And what I mean by drive type is how you actually connect your screw to your drill to drive it. Uh, there can be many different things on the end of this thing. Traditionally, back in the day, we had the, the flat slotted screw. Some people call those screws flathead, so it gets confusing because the flathead is really the flathead. Uh, but the one slot, the single slot, can be called a flat-headed screw. It's really a slotted screw. Um, I would only recommend using those for appearance. If, if for whatever reason, whatever you're building needs that look, use them. Other than that, they're a pain in the butt to use. I, I wouldn't recommend them. Predominantly here in the United States still, unfortunately, is the next type, which is the Phillips head screw. Um, I am not a fan of the Phillips head screw. Phillips heads uh, tend to cam out, they tend to strip out, they tend to strip the drivers in your, uh, your uh, tools out, uh, but it's pretty much mostly what we get here. If you're buying sheetrock uh, screws, they're going to be Phillips head. It, it's in the United States, it is predominantly what is used here. Unfortunately, I don't consider them the best uh, type of head, but it's what's most available here. Now, other companies are making more heads now that are different. Uh, this Spax company makes a star head, a Torx head. Uh, the Robertson type of head is a square head. Um, and there's a Posi type head, which is a combination of square and Phillips. All three of those are much better than Phillips head. Okay guys, here's a good image of all of the drives I'm talking about. Number one being the slot, number two being the square, number three is an Allen, not really used here, but it was in the image I found. Number four is Phillips, number five is Posi, and number six is Star or Torx. Let's talk a little bit about the shank of the screw. Um, there are several reasons that shanks have, and let me show you this one, a flat area and a threaded area. Some screws will have a groove at the tip. That shank at the end is to help self-tap. So they would be called self-tapping screws and it would say something about that on the box if they had them. I don't use them because I almost always cut a pilot hole. A pilot hole allows the screw to sink into the lumber easier. It doesn't have to dig everything out. Uh, all of the strength from screw joinery, so to speak, comes from the thread actually cutting in and being seated into those cuts that it makes. Uh, so you want um, a pilot hole so that it doesn't have to make extra work getting in there, rounding off and hurting the threads. The other thing you want is this flat spot at the end. The reason for this is if you have two boards that you're putting together, if they have a little bit of a gap between them when you're cinching them up, the head is going to bring that first board to the second board and with this having no threads here, it will do it without interfering with all of the threads that were cut. If you had threads going all the way to the top of the head, it's going to have, it's going, the head is going to move that board and the two boards are going to come together and all it can do is break the little pattern that your threads have made and that's going to make for a weaker joint. So having this area not threaded allows the top board to move to the bottom board and be cinched up tight without hurting the threads made down here in the board you're holding to. It makes for a stronger joint. That's another reason I don't like sheetrock screws because their threads go all the way to the head. Um, so that's something to think about with the thread part of a screw. <clears throat> so that's the anatomy of a screw. That's the makeup of screws. I want to tell you a little story on what kind of screws you need to buy and why I have so many screws here. I, uh, about four years ago, went to McFeely's website and bought a bunch of screws. I got these little things here, tiny little number four by three eighths of an inch. I got these big four inch guys here. I ordered a bunch of screws. I got them all in square head, which I like, which I'm happy about. And I started making all my projects happily as a pig and you know what, knowing I had a screw for whatever I needed. And you know what happened? I ended up using two screw types and that's it. You really don't need to buy a bunch of different types of screws. What you really need to do, guys, is have screws for the length uh, of the material you're using. And what I mean by that is more the thickness of the material you're using. 
We predominantly use three quarters of an inch lumber in a lot of our furniture making. You know, sheet goods, generally three quarters of an inch, slightly under, I know, but you know what I mean. Um, we a lot of times go to the big box stores and we'll buy lumber that's already been uh, set at three quarters of an inch, or we mill our lumber to three quarters of an inch if we're working from a plan. Many times that plan says three quarters of an inch. What you want to get with screws for good joinery and holding power is the screw has to go through the first board and at least halfway into the second board. If you're using two pieces of three quarter inch material, that is about an inch and a quarter screw. That's what you would need. Anything longer is going to pierce through the second board, which you don't want. Anything shorter is not going to get you halfway through the second board, which isn't going to be a strong joint. So inch and a quarter screws are almost mostly what's used. And that's what I found I kept using and using and using and running out of. I kept reordering number eight inch and a quarter and number six inch and a quarter. <clears throat> And I would say, if you were only going to have one box of screws in your shop, it would be a number eight inch and a quarter screw. It is easily the most used screw in woodworking in my mind. I keep on hand, and what I'm going to put in this, this is going to be my main box of screws. I'm going to keep about four screw types in here, and I'm going to keep some nails in here that I use occasionally. That's another video. The screws that I'm going to keep are obviously the number eight inch and a quarter. I just went to Mephili's website and I ordered a thousand of them. Um, it's just the most used screw over time. I've just learned that I keep running out of that screw and the other ones are still full. I'm not using them so I don't need them. Um, so this is going to be my working box. It's going to have number eight inch and a quarter. It's going to have number six inch and a quarter. It's going to have number eight inch and three quarter. The reason I want that extra half inch is occasionally I will take a board and go into end grain through a flat grain into end grain. I want more depth. I don't want to just go a half inch into end grain. I'd like to go at least an inch. Uh, I have some longer screws here if needed. You could go two inches there instead of inch and three quarters. Uh, that, that would be your uh, preference you know, for going into end grain. Uh, you want more holding power going into end grain. The last one I'm going to keep is, and let me find them, the number six, one inch. It is a smaller screw, but it's a screw that I have noticed I've used a lot with thinner materials. And I use it enough that I will keep one of these bins, one of these smaller bins, with the number six, one inch. So, number eight and number six, inch and a quarter, number eight, inch and three quarters, and number six, one inch. Those are the only screws that I'm going to have in this container. And I will use this container 90 to 95% of my woodworking needs. All of these other screws are going to go into another one of these things that uh, I'll just keep it under my bench for that odd time I need a specialty sized screw. Uh, so don't do what I did. Don't go out and buy a bunch of screws thinking you're going to need them. You won't. Um, save yourself a little bit of money. Buy the screws you probably will use the most. Start with a box of number eight inch and a quarter uh, and move from there. When you find you need the skinnier ones for something, get yourself a box of the number sixes inch and a quarters. If you find you're going into end grain, that's when you can get yourself a box of uh, the, you know, two inch, inch and three quarter, whatever. I would recommend buying the higher grade ones. GRK and SPAX are good brands that are sold at the big box stores. You can get these. This is a box of 200. This cost me about 10 bucks. I think it was $8.99 plus tax, so I paid about $9.50 out the door. Um, they're much more expensive than sheetrock screws. Um, it doesn't hurt to keep some sheetrock screws around for building jigs and stuff. Just don't think they're going to work in hardwood all the time. Alright guys, so that's screws. In a nutshell, you don't need a lot of screws. You need a couple of different sizes. Uh, I hope this made sense. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe for me. And have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.